Hello YouTube and welcome to another episode, you can call it an episode that is, <laughs> of Adam's Two Wheels Better. Uh, what we're doing today, we're going to do the oil and filter service on the DR250. Uh, get it all ready, it's going for its MOT in the morning. So I did drop the oil when I got it, or put some oil in when I got it because it came. Obviously I think they must drain it all for uh, transportation. Um, so I put some oil in, but it was just oil I had left over in the shed really. So I'm going to put some decent oil in it this time. Put me on. Castro Power One. Um, 1.9 litres it is. Um, with the filter changed, we're going to get on with that. We've got to remove sump guard, uh, remove the sump plug, drop the oil from there. Okay, on this model, you see that, that it has oil in the frame, so that is the plug that I need to remove to drop the oil from the frame. Then obviously, there's a sump guard. Uh, I'll show you a bit later on. This pipe here has an oil strainer that goes up into this part, so we're going to remove that as well. Um, check the oil strainer, make sure that's all right. I'm hoping there's no problems with it because it's going to be hard to get hold of the new one if there is, but hopefully it's just a bit of a clean out and pop it back in. Um, remove this cover here, this is the cover, these three bolts here, this is the cover for the uh, oil filter. So I'll get on with it, start stripping it down give you a bit of a commentary as we go. Right, so it's a 12 milli socket to remove the sun guard. Get on with this, remove the sun guard. Four bolts in the sun guard. Quite easy to come out, it's a good sign. I, never, I didn't remove the sun last time with the oil change because you can get the sun plug. But you do get oil then all over your sun guard, so I'm not expecting that when I take it off. Not too bad actually. Right the other side, get the other one. Inside of that sunk guard, isn't it? Not too much bashing, that is it? Good sign. Leave the bolts in there. milli to remove the sump plug. I have run the engine a little bit so it should be should come out pretty easy. Try not get it, this is the trick now just trying to get it all over your hands. to keep it in until it's ready. There we go. Let's grab a cloth. <laughs> that looks alright, washer looks in decent nick. Oil looks a bit black, but I suppose for a dirt bike and 
a motorbike, sorry, it's not too bad, is it? There'll be bits of, bits of clutch in there and everything else, I imagine. We'll let that drain off, and then we'll remove this, drain the oil out the frame, and then we'll have a go at getting the strainer out. And then while that's all draining, um, I'll show you the filter, high floor filter, tiny little thing. That's all it is. Pops on that way, bit of a spring and a rubber seal. I'm hoping the rubber seal's in good condition. Remember the good old days when they used to actually send you a seal with things like that? Not anymore. Just stand the bike upright a little bit. tomorrow. Looking forward to actually get to ride it, <laughs> to get it on the road. It's all insured so um, I've checked with the DVLA, I've checked with the MOT tester and he assures me that this can be ridden to a pre-booked MOT station even though it's not well registered and obviously there's no MOT, no tax but there is insurance on it so it can be ridden within reason. Obviously you won't really go and book an MOT 100 mile there. But I have known people do that. Not personally, but I've read on the forums where they've come in at Southampton and they live up in maybe North West London, 100 odd mile away, and they've pre-booked it for an MOT, so they've rode it from Southampton when they've got it off the boat or drove the car, whichever, in, whatever they've imported. Well, good luck with that. I doubt you'd get away with that this day and age. The year of AMPR cameras and everything else, I think you'd be getting a stop before you got on the M3. Don't drift out a little bit more. So I think it's half past ten tomorrow it's booked in. I'm not really concerned about much. Tyres are not illegal, but there's plenty of life left in them. But I'm looking at replacing them, I'll be honest. With the same type of tyre. I think Morphe was saying what tyre he has on, and when I've checked these, I'm running the same ones. So, I don't know, maybe we'll get a bit out of them. No point in changing them, they don't need changing. Get a few months out of them. Right, stand it up one more, give it a bit of a bounce about. on there. It's been well maintained this bike. Everything I've done on it so far, you know, you can see that it's been well maintained. You know, you're coming across new parts and stuff on it, so I am pleased with it. I am very pleased with it. Time will tell for the MLT tomorrow, but like I say, when you look around the bike and you see, you know, you, it's been well serviced, stuff has been replaced, we'll have a look. Uh, air filter, brilliant. Took it out, had a look at it and a quick clean, oiled it. It's like new, it doesn't need replacing. Um, 
we'll see what that input was like. It's getting replaced anyway, but it'll just show whether the oil has been dropped recently. So while that drips out of there, we'll replace this, we'll take the cover off the other side. I don't really want to move the camera around the other side, I know you're not going to be able to see. But I'll try a little trick so that I can record it on my phone and do some editing. So this last little winkle. socket for the um, oil filter cover so this is going to be the one really we'll check what condition the seals in and tightening it up can't go too tight with it yep, so we're going to remove the four that's quite tight actually We have the three <laughs> There's a spring on the back of this which holds the and a rubber seal. So you've got to be careful when you remove it. Oh the rubber seal stayed on the frame there. I'll take the filter and we'll look what condition that's in. A bit mucky, isn't it? But it is what it is. No. I'm going to keep the seal there, I think. Mop up the old aisle. and clean in there. Now that seal sat pretty well there, so I'm not going to disturb it. It looks in good nick. You don't want to start peeling off and then it breaks halfway around or something like that. It's seated in quite well, so I'm not going to disturb that at all. seal there as well. That was a rubber seal inside there, I suppose the spring will just push that against there. Seems a bit tighter fit than the other one. Now this is the mistake, I'm dropping that in there. No, same size. Same size that spring, like I said, the spring will hold it in place. Bob that in. This is where I'm going to need two hands, YouTube. So I'll put this cover back on and I'll see you around the other side to start taking out the oil strainer. Yep, so I've got the filter in. Just going to pop the cover back on. Put the cover back on and then get this pipe off, get the oil strainer out. 
that'll be the last of the oil out of there and the last thing to check put all the all back on put some oil in it run the engine check for leaks easy job really don't take too long easy to tackle yourself better than paying some mechanic 50 quid labor to do it I'll give us two minutes and we'll put these bolts back in and we're going to do an anti-eight nothing major these plugs back in and then we'll get the strainer out and have a look at that Small Phillips screwdriver. Look. Let's try and get a flat one. Right. Right, well, I'll remove this oil strainer and I'll let you have a look at it. Not 
tube. We're on to a winner. A couple of little bits. Um, definitely some bits, some metal filings in it. But I was more concerned, I mean you're going to get that aren't you, on any any bike and any engine. I was more concerned on the condition of the actual strainer but there's no holes in it. There's no obvious problems with it. There's some like silicony bits and some harder. I don't know. I don't want to go too mad trying to get them out. Look, you want them out? Is there any little metal bits floating about in your oil? You're obviously going to have an effect on engine wear. Oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm pretty pleased with how, how that's gone. I'm not going to bother spraying any solvent in it or anything like that because that's only going to contaminate the oil, isn't it? I'm just going to pop that back in. I'm pretty pleased with it. Probably could do with a bit of a blower. You know, blow it out a bit, but I suppose, no, no, let's not bother with solvent, let's just pop it back in. That, nice and clean. Back in she goes, put the pipe back on. Gotta get it right, I don't want to cross me anything. Really, YouTube couldn't have gone any better, could it? I'm well pleased with that. You can see that oil strain is in good condition. You can see good seal. Yeah, it's dirty that oil filter, but that's what it's there for, isn't it? To put it all shine. But it didn't look like it had been in for years, so it looked like it had been replaced pretty regularly. There's all new crimp washers on all the plugs. So I'm happy, I'm pretty happy that this engine has had regular oil change and be well looked after. So I'm gonna put the new oil in, check the level, start it. Um, the way you check the oil on these, you've got to run them for maybe three minutes, then check it, because obviously all the oil goes with it being in the frame, some of it does stay within the dry sump, but some of it does obviously stay in the engine, you've got to get it pumping around the frame before you check the oil, so checking it cold in the morning make sure it needs some oil, and it doesn't and I think that's the mistake I made because it definitely looks like more than 1.9 litres of oil has come out of it, but you always think that, don't you? You always drop your oil and think, Jesus, a lot of oil coming out of this but anyway, I'll get my funnel, and we'll put some oil in
find my funnel when we use my funnel. Let's just have a look at it, right? tomorrow that's all fine I've um, paid my money and sent all the information off to the Suzuki Owners Club so they're on with getting me um, a certificate well a dating certificate really um, one little thing to bear in mind that Suzuki wanted £95 for the dating certificate the Suzuki Owners Club actually wanted £50 last year and then they changed it in January, I had to pay £60. But, if, no matter what bike you have, if you have a Yamaha, brilliant, because they'll do it for £25, the Yamaha Owners Club. Any other make and model of bike, they'll do it for £30. So I could have got it done at price, but it's just a school by area. Really. It's not shopping round, I presume. I'd have to go to Suzuki with it. Um, so yeah, just something to bear in mind if you're doing it yourself. Go on to the, the Yamaha Owners Club. I think it's the, actually the, the Yamaha RD Owners Club. Go on there. They'll get you a dating certificate for £30. Same service, it's the same thing. Can't see DVLA having a problem with it. It's a registered owners club. You know, they won't have a problem getting it from Suzuki. They won't have a problem um, mess with the oil. You know, they wouldn't have a problem if it was Yamaha providing you a, a dating certificate for a Yamaha. So why would they have a problem with any other maker bike? So that's the route I suggest you use. Yamaha DR owners club, thirty pound for a dating certificate. If you want to stay at Suzuki, you want to do what I did and uh, make yourself a member of the Suzuki Owners Club. Um, it's £25 to be a member. And then, obviously the rest of it. The other £35. You've got the charger for the dating certificate. So if you're already a member of the Suzuki Owners Club, then if you're getting it for £35, but it's still cheaper. I mean, how can they charge their own members more? They want another side of you. You don't have to be a member of this. Hopefully, <laughs> I'm all 
see you tomorrow. That's about it. So I'll film that tomorrow. Um, and I'll wear my new jacket as well, my new Oxford jacket. But I'll film that, taking it for MOT. So <laughs> you'll know as soon as I know whether it's passed or not. Um, and then we're just waiting then. As soon as that dating certificate falls through the post, so I'll get his, everything's ready to go to the DVL there. Well, if it passes the MOT. Let's not jump the gun on that, but hopefully it will. And we'll have it on the road sometime in February and get out. Because at the moment, the salt on the roads. I don't really want to be taking the verses out, even though I'm itching to get out. What I might do is um, video on the kit. I'd say I've got a new jacket, I've got a new helmet to suit the bike, and I've got some more like type of enduro or type of boots. Um, plus my other kit I've got, so I might do a review on the kit. Or Show you, give me a bit, give you a, 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 a Can't really do it on the Oxford jacket or the new boots because they're warm. <laughs> but I can show you what they are, at least. It takes so long, but you get oil in it, I think. That's it. Um, and then, really, it'll be the. We'll be on the verses. Got it. <sighs> The brakes are good clean. Uh, lube the chair, or well, lube this clean and lube this chair as well. I've got some new disc ricks. I've had that people who watch my channel know I've had that problem with the slight warping. So I've got some new EBC brake discs. A bit of gold, a bit of bling on them, so they're going on. Uh, headlight. I'll tell you what I'll do. Well, that is pouring in there. I'll show you. No, I won't. <laughs> no, I won't. Because I've got to dig them all out. We won't bother with that. I will show you one when I'm fitting them. So can okay, we get it on? Should be near as damn it. 1.9 litres of oil. Let's have a check. Well, she's been running. This is a bugger. Gotta get the oil. <laughs> get it in the oil. What did they say? You get it in if it had fur around it. Or her, not fur. Fur. Jesus. Let me secrets out there. Right, let's get rid of this so we don't stick our foot in it. This is probably going to be the worst video ever. Just too cramped in here. Too cramped. But it's better doing it here than in my bike shed. Because you literally can't do anything in my shed at home. But this is where the bikes stay in here. Stored in here. What that? That seems to be getting a bit stiffer. And it's old age. Like me. Oh, that's 
Apologise for that noise in the background. Going grinding away, doing something, but bike's all done now. That's the old service, oil and filter service done. Um, put the sump guard back on. Sump guard's back on. Everything's back. Check the oil level, that's perfect. Uh, it's all running all right. Um, oh yeah, everything's working for the MOT. Just got one bit of a conundrum. The arm. It works. But the other day when I had the bike running in there for a while, it stopped working. <laughs> so I bought a new arm. Do I put it on? Um, or do I leave it? If it's working, what do they say? If it's broke, don't fix it. So it's all working. So I think I'm going to leave it and chance it with that arm on and then replace it with the new one. There's the new one. The new one. Anyway, yeah. Um, so we'll get back to tomorrow. Get back to you tomorrow. When we're going for MRT. Fingers crossed that <laughs> it passes. Cheers for now. See you. Bye. Thanks for watching.